Hey everybody, welcome to Cinefix Now. And so much stuff happened literally last night and over the past few days. We couldn't decide what we wanted to talk about. So we brought everybody into the room. We're gonna talk about all of it. Starting with Phil. Woo! Phil, go. All right, so Disney yesterday had two big announcements. Uh, they are doing The Incredibles 2 and Cars 3. Woo! <laughs> Now, <laughs> Cars 3 makes me think of that YouTube video from a couple months ago, which I think you'll be able to watch some around here, where it was a, a parody video where someone pitches boats to Disney. Like, we got it, we've got boats. And now I'm waiting for tractors and trucks to come out as well. Trains. 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 But The Incredibles 2, I don't know about you guys, I'm pumped about it because yeah. I love The Incredibles so much. I also feel like it's kind of underrated. I don't know about everybody else, but I feel like most people think of Finding Nemo, Ratatouille and Wally -E first when I think of like the newer Disney uh, Pixar films. I'm super excited. I love The Incredibles. It's my favorite Pixar movie of all of them. I love it. It's like they had basically put the Fantastic Four and did a new sort of spin on it. Uh, and Brad Bird is freaking amazing. The yeah. most surprising thing to me is that it took this long to make Incredibles. Yeah, yeah. Great. everyone that loves it. well, I think. I mean, they, they made... That they took their time to sort of figure it out. Yeah, I mean, they made, made Cars 2 and Planes before Incredibles. <laughs> well, no, no. They, and now there's going to be Cars 3, which is just a 90-minute toy. They version. didn't make Planes. <laughs> they didn't make Planes. It's very, very specific that Pixar did not make Planes. Disney made Planes. You know Lasseter had a special Hawaiian I'm shirt. Sure, but, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure that Lasseter got, like, a nice... Paycheck as a consultant on planes. I, I am extremely excited because I think that Brad Bird and The Incredibles do what Cars doesn't, which I think is why I don't like Cars. And maybe if I was five, I would like Cars. Which is, if you not look suck. at, um, not suck. <laughs> yeah, yes, they don't suck. <laughs> They're great kids movies, but they have that like old school Disney quality of having that those subtle B stories that are good for adults. I mean, The Incredibles has a storyline about the mother worrying about whether or not the dad is cheating on her. <laughs> and that it results in the entire Which it turns climax, out he is. Which, which it is turns terrible. out he kind of is. Yeah. But it, it results in the entire climax of the movie. Right. But if you're a six, you can watch that movie and you kind of don't get it. But if you're an adult, you're like, ooh. But then when your parents get divorced, you go, yeah, I get it. Got it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So more or less, Incredibles, yay, Cars. Yeah, who cares? Okay. I'm not even going to notice that they're going to make it, to be perfectly honest. Mike, what do you got? Yes, Game of Thrones. Ah, uh, new trailer came out, uh, right? Yeah, I guess winter is coming, so... <laughs> <laughs> summer is coming. Yeah, winter, winter is coming, coming in the summer. April. Apparently, yeah. Unless so, they're in the it southern hemisphere. Though. That's the whole point. So latest, uh, <laughs> latest trailer, uh, everybody's up to their usual shenanigans. It, it feels like... They're, they're, I mean, they're trying to show as little as they can because if they show any little bit of, of the dramatic changes that are coming, it would completely spoil. It would be all, all spoilers. So it has to be like face, side, and then, oh, look, I didn't recognize Cersei. I recognize Tyrion. So, and there's a great song. They used uh, London Grammar, a British trip hop band, singing In Excess's Devil Inside. And they're a good band. It's good. Uh, listen to it, check out London Grammar, and, and have a nap. Trip hop? You, I mean, that's what they call it. Is that, is that a new? Yeah. That's a, no, that's been around. Right? But they, it'll make you, it'll make you sleepy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the main thing it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens this season because there is so much changing, and I wonder how uh, fans are gonna react to that. The people who don't know what's coming yet. I don't know what's coming yet. What you don't yeah. I didn't know the red wedding right. was coming either. Like, oh. yeah. I was one of those people that when I read, I remember reading that. I was one of those people who went like, no. Uh, and, and, I, and I was watching it, and I still went, no! Because I don't know what's coming up mm -hmm. in season four, but the, watching the trailer, you're like, everybody's talking off camera, there's no right. shots that's left up for more than, you know, 35 frames, right. maybe. You, you would have to know, you'd have to have read the books to have any clue uh, what's happening, and all, yeah. all, the, all that you know is, you know, this is a writer who loves to kill off his characters. Yeah. Right. And he takes pride in that. He loves to just demolish all of his fans' expectations. Yeah. He recently came out and said something to the effect of, like, it's so adorable that all of these fans think they know, have these amazing predictions of how this book is going to end, the, the series is going to end. He's like, you guys, you guys forgot what kind of books I'm writing, because right. you're all voting for this happy ending that's 
I'm sorry, but never gonna Homie, come. Homie, don't play this that. Not gonna come. <laughs> exactly, it is a direct quote from George R. R. Martin. <laughs> this season, people who casually watch the show are completely screwed. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're like, what is this? Who are these two guys having this jump around fight in this courtyard? And where is this? The one thing that I've always said is missing from Games of Thrones though, is jump around fights. Jump <laughs> around <laughs> fights. I, I, fights. I, McKinsey! If that is indeed your real name. That is my real name. So they are coming out with the Giver movie. And you already seem really upset about it. My, you are. They're ruining my childhood. The trailer came out this morning. It doesn't even go along. It, the, okay. <laughs> That sums that up. Okay, great. Done. All right. I think it's my turn. The book itself is black and white. The trailer is all in color. I don't know if, like... You mean the the print is in black? I don't know. You know how in Pleasantville, it's like they live in this society where it's all black and white because everything's pleasant. The premise of The Giver is uh, the man who has all the memories is dying, and he needs to pass on his memories to somebody. So he is the giver, giving on the memories of the world before we created this dystopian society where everything's black and white but it's all pleasant and perfect so in the trailer we're seeing like these like crazy colors it looks like the island it slash really Ender's nice. game it looks it really, really nice. nice we're seeing like this crazy futuristic stuff where it's like not at all what i remember spaceships and tractor beams exactly kind of liberty is a reason <laughs> 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 this has been like a long time coming right 15 years yeah. in the making. Yeah. People have been asking funny. for this movie for yeah. a long, long time. Me! And Taylor Swift is in my movie. It's it just... <laughs> she, wow. How dare you? <laughs> I went through a crazy, like, dystopian society phase after reading The Giver. I read 1984. I read... <laughs> I read... Ray Bradbury signed my third high and I can see her sitting in Beverly Hills in a bikini. Reading <laughs> 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 this dystopian novel. Oh, how very bleak and drab. <laughs> she sips her lemonade. I read this book when I was like seven or eight. I mean, I, I, I don't remember it that well. I remember it being like a lo-fi children of man, right? Where he like finds a baby and has to escape with the uh. baby. Maybe they've taken some of that thematic structure and updated it. Kind of like some of the good things about the RoboCop remake. Right. <laughs> I was hoping you would. <laughs> like, like, thematic, thematically, if I you liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I liked it a lot. if you can update and make it more relevant for audiences like that, that makes sense. I don't regret them for doing that. Um, that being said, it doesn't look good. It's, it looks, <laughs> it looks like, what it looks like is every other bit of, of young adult sort of exactly. dystopian yeah. sci-fi yeah. that's out there right now. Uh, if it took 15 years, it, it makes sense that now all of a sudden they can make that movie because that's that's I, what's in theater. I feel but, sorry for like the 12th. Uh, studio that makes a, a stupid <laughs> Hunger Games Hunger, Hunger Games rip off and Poor doesn't make two media. doesn't make two dollars and goes what went wrong? I don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mean Guy Ritchie? What's up, Dave? All right, there's a cool whole bunch of cool Marvel stuff that just came out. They did a whole big uh, special where they pat themselves on the back and we're awesome, high fiving everywhere. Uh, but basically, uh, some of the cool stuff they showcase they showcase this great um, uh, uh, sort of. Uh, picture that they're planning on making for Avengers 2, which is going to be the Hulk versus Iron Man in Hulkbuster armor. This is crazy. I'm super excited about this. Now, uh, when we saw the Iron Man 3 real, real trailer... Quick, any other geeks at the table that are really excited? It's just two. I mean, it's just, just I, mean, I, I like the oh, yes. Look, when you hear Hulk you know Buster, you yeah. should be excited. Yeah. Yeah. You know who the Hulk is, and you know busting stuff is sure. cool. <laughs> and the ability to bust said Hulk is super cool. It's really cool. In the comic wow. books, uh, the Hulk Buster armor uh, lets him basically be able to lift 175 tons, uh, and he also has like a gamma detector. So he can like find the Hulk like like behind walls and stuff like that. So it's specifically designed to fight the Hulk. Actually, Tony Stark has armors that are specifically designed to fight every one of the Avengers. He's like how Batman always right. has like you know just in case someone in the Justice League gets taken over, he can stop them. Tony Stark's the same way. Just in case he's a bad guy. Exactly, because it always happens inevitably, right? But and they who also would stop Tony Stark. Indeed. Uh, well, yeah, in Bruce Civil Jackson. War, yeah. <laughs> alcohol is yeah. his limit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, whiskey, well, exactly. man versus self kind of situation. <laughs> in Civil War, Thor beat the crap out of Tony Stark because Tony Stark like made a clone of him or whatever. So I think Thor can handle that. But also, they showcase a look for a Quicksilver. They showcase a look for Scarlet Witch. I'm so super psyched though because Quicksilver. First off, they they already have a win because Quicksilver actually looks 
at least a little bit like what he looks like in the comic books, unlike, uh, you know, X-Men Days of Future Past, X-Men where Days of Future I don't know what Past. that is. Yeah, He's like a, he's like a, a 70s, early 80s, like, glam rocker. Yeah. yeah. He's got silver, he's got, he's got Halle Berry storm hair. He's got a full silver, like, Canadian tuxedo. And... He feels like a guy that wouldn't have been tough enough to go to the Whiskey A Go Go back in like 1980. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I want, I want to see him in like Saturday Night Fever. Right. Like going like, oh, I'm yeah, so that, fast. That movie is set in the <laughs> yep. So it's perfect. I know, but I he, mean, the, the thing, so he's fashion four. He's a movie. Yeah, you <laughs> think about that so, one. He's so uh, just, just in defense of. Quicksilver, because he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> uh, he would want to, I mean, even if he, he was looks, here. He does kind of look like like a punk rock kid from the from the time period. So that's sort of the, the danger of releasing as many images as X Men has released. Is like you get all of it out of context, and like in the film, you know, maybe it'll make more sense. That's true. Oh God, true. I hope so. The, the thing is, though, honestly, it's like you know, we nerds love superheroes because they're cool. We don't want our superheroes necessarily to look like nerds. He looks like a nerdy kid who like just grabbed a bunch of stuff <laughs> from like Home Depot. Like, he spray painted a jacket purple. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm gonna save the day. He's got like, you know, remember like in Wayne's World, Garth had like a utility belt with like a zapper. He looks like that. Well, it's really cool though because Joss Whedon said he wanted Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch in because all the Avengers have punchy powers. Right. And he wants people with other powers because of course Quicksilver's like the Flash and Scarlet Witch has pretty much is pretty much the most powerful person in the Marvel universe. And she looks awesome. The yeah. concept art for her is really cool. Yeah, they went totally opposite. See, see, that's a good. Uh, that's actually a great example. So X Men Days of Future Past Quicksilver completely ridiculous, goes way off uh, with what they did in the comic book. Uh, Scarlet Witch also goes way off, but it's in a way that makes sense. When you look at her comic book outfit, it's too outrageous for any kind of movie. It's slutty. It, it's just, yeah, it's like, it's, it works for cosplay, but not really, like, in any real-world capacity. Mm-hmm. So I think they went the right way with, uh, with... Yeah, yeah, I think you need to trademark punchy powers, by the way. <laughs> I, think jo- I think, sadly, Joss Whedon said that. Between Maybe punchy I can powers and jumpy fights, I think... <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, so, Avengers, uh, Marvel seems to be in the lead. Oh, yeah. With with the look of their superheroes. Just that being said, I'm still excited for X Men Days. It's going to be great. It's it's still, yeah. I still believe in it. I have really strong hopes that it's going to be amazing. It's like Singer it's like the... still owes us one after yes. Superman, yeah. and, and he, owes, he probably owes us two after Jack the Giant Slayer too. Yeah. yeah. Two. Okay. Uh, so the thing that happened last night that has me really excited is the first like real trailer for Maleficent. Uh, I've been seeing the teasers. I'm sure all you guys have the posters, all that kind of stuff, and mostly it's just like. Angelina Jolie like has completely stopped dating because her cheekbones are popping, <laughs> uh, her thing. and her makeup yeah. is on point. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's like super evil. But in this new trailer, they kind of give Maleficent a little bit of a backstory, which I would have to imagine is necessary. You have to make the main character feel justified in their actions because you know this is a movie where we have an antihero. She's crazy evil, and even in the animated Cinderella growing up, Maleficent freaked me out. She was terrifying. I think that it was like a lot darker than Disney has ever been since in terms of their villains in a lot of ways. Like she wasn't singing songs like Ursula and being kind of funny. Like Maleficent is Maleficent is just straight up terrifying. <laughs> and I think they're nailing it with this Angelina Jolie thing. And in the new trailer, that's like she was like a fairy or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they took yeah, her wings scary away. Wings, right? Yeah, they took her wings away. So she's sort of avenging wrongs done to her in the past, and it looks really friggin' awesome. It seems like wicked to me where you're like getting the other side of the story. A little bit. Well, yeah. expect, and, and there's the other, the other thing that, that's happening is like all of the original uh, fairy tales and things like that, they used to be really, really dark. Yeah. yeah. Like the, all the originals, we, we were just talking yeah, about it. Yeah, right. yeah, like the originals were, were dark and scary. And then they went to the, this happy Disneyland place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but which is fine. Yeah, which is a, a whole other thing altogether. Thing. Uh, but then we're coming back and we're yeah. getting like we're trying to understand our villains. Yeah. And, like, and I'm more so. excited about under like I'm more excited about understanding Maleficent yeah. than I am about this is a dark and gritty version of of Sleeping Beauty. Right. right. Like I'm I don't right. I don't give a sh- that she's 16. She was cursed before she was born. Right. She doesn't have a backstory. She's not that interesting. Right. And just, right? watch, like, just watch the OG anime just watch, Sleeping yeah. Beauty because it's great. And in the OG anime Sleeping Beauty, the hero isn't Sleeping Beauty or the prince. It's the three little old ladies. 
And the three little lady fairies are, even though they're the heroes, they're kind of annoying as fuck. Yeah. So in the new trailer when Maleficent slams them into and a box, I'm like, yes, <laughs> shove them in there. Is it like, yeah. in, in the original story, doesn't she like curse the whole kingdom because she wasn't invited to the party? Yeah, and that was her entire like, motivation. So capricious. It was yeah. like, it was yeah. like you like, guys had a, a, a wedding and you didn't invite me, so yeah. fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Girls, am I right? Girls. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, long story short, it looks freaking in there. Yeah. Awesome. Totally. Hopefully yeah. there's going to be jumpy fights. Yeah. <laughs> Cruz, what do we got? <laughs> uh, Maze Runner looks amazing to me. I, I Yes, it's in this, it's another one of these dystopian futures full of young, beautiful people running from scary <laughs> movies. I get it. Sounds good. I, it. That means, like, I, I, I think the, the Hunger Games found its voice with the second movie. It was a really yeah. good version of it. Yeah. Um, I don't have high hopes for Divergent because everybody that's in it is a good actor and it looks like they're acting badly, but maybe it'll be good. Um, I kind of have high hopes for The Giver. Maybe I, don't, I, I just want it to work. Maybe it won't, but I hope it does. But this one, of the, of the three coming out of Divergent, the Divergent series, The Giver, and, and Maze Runner, this one to me looks like it's really loyal to the books in all of the good ways, but does movie, it movifies it in, in ways that, that are still loyal to that story, but make it better. I'm most interested in the Maze Runner yes. of those three. And, and granted, he, that's because I'm a dude, and I'm not like, you know, because Divergent, as far as I can tell, is like a girl, another story about a girl having to choose between two guys that are, that are both just fine. But I, but I do. I, 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 I think it looks exciting. I think the acting looks really good. I think the the guy from Teen Wolf does an amazing job in in, in just that little segment. All the kids are great. You kind of discredit um, him by saying the guy from Teen. Wolf. He is the guy from Teen Wolf. I don't really love the Teen Wolf. The Y, the YA thing seems to be. They, they just seem to be so hit and miss because there's that Mortal Instruments thing that just came and went. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like and like and like the, the, the host. Hunger, Hunger the Games host disappeared. Hunger, Hunger Games had been two movies before they really found their it. voice. What I like about the Maze Runner is, from what I can gather about it, is it looks like not these like glossy like what they're doing with The Giver and what they did with Ender's Game. Mm-hmm. It looks like those post post apocalyptic movies from the eighties, like. You know, Mad Max yeah. and all that seems to be like a desolate wasteland that they live mm-hmm. in, and like so. There's a reason, like, because all these other post-apocalyptic, like, dystopian futures, they're always like in these lush countries. And it's like, is that really gonna cause Never dystopia? <laughs> you know, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be compared to the Hunger Games for better or worse. So I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it does. Truly, Deadline is announcing that Sony is looking at an early 2015 start for Ghostbusters. Uh, Ivan Reitman <laughs> has stepped out as a director after Harold Ramis passed away, uh, and he has confirmed that there is a script that he believes is very good and that the studio is very happy with, uh, that has the original Ghostbusters, or what's left of them, in very minor roles, um, and they're putting together a short list of directors uh, that they're going to go out to, and my hope is that uh, Lord and Miller yeah. are on there. Uh, well, they did a great job with the Lego movie. I mean, if anybody's got to do Ghostbusters. I would hope that it would be Lord and Miller. Yeah, some of the so names that other people have thrown out are, are just disgusting. Like, I, I love Todd Phillips movies, but a Todd Phillips Todd Ghostbusters, Phillips Ghostbusters, I have no interest yeah. in it. You and part, s- of me, part of me wants to see them ruin it, just so that we can push that past it and get a new franchise yeah. going. You got. I mean, you just got to have somebody that, that genuinely reveres the, the first Ghostbusters. Yeah. The second Ghostbusters, they have to at least like, but they mm-hmm. need to revere the first Ghostbusters for it to actually work. Like and and I have a right in stepping down. I don't even mind because of you know evolution and was it my <laughs> super like ex, my super I, I like evolution too. Evolution had its moments, but I mean yeah, it was a great uh, Head and Shoulders commercial. It was. It was. It's still going it's to produce. The fact, so. Yeah, but it's it's more the fact that we'd probably be missing Bill Murray because yeah. he's not going to do it. We're, obviously, we're going to be missing Harold Ramis. So it's like a Ghostbusters movie with just Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. Well, but there's uh, that scene where they are basically playing buddy cops in the first one. And yeah. Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. They're just like... That's true. Isolated, and they had a good chemistry. So you mean building... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, building off that relationship, it could become a good third act. It went, like, the conversation of it overnight went from Ghostbusters 3 to Ghostbusters Reboot. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure... All I know is, is, tough. If, if, there I mean, is, if there is a holy ground to yeah. tread on... 
yeah. comedy wise, it's Ghostbusters. Yeah. So yeah. they and have to be very careful with what they're doing and how they're doing. Of the few people in the world that ever played the video game where they all reprised their characters. I love that. It game. was amazing. It was a fantastic cinematic experience. It's a terrible game. Obviously. But it was a great like revisit to the whole yeah. franchise and an update to the story and making it modern. The problem is because they don't have any of the original or as many of the original right. parts as is ideal, they can literally go anywhere. Yeah, and that's kind yeah. of the problem. That's too. In, that's but also potentially, uh, uh, if they get the right people, a stepping stone to do something awesome. Yeah, to yeah. like yeah. really bring Ghostbusters to a new generation in a good way, like Lord Miller could do. If it's great and they do it right, I can't yeah. wait. But uh, man, I'm scared. It's yeah. scary, and then how right. are you going to deal with Jack Black being a character? Obviously, oh, shoehorn. Not well. Not well. <laughs> All right, well, that was a whole lot of stuff. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And come back next time for more movie news on Cinefix Now.